Well, let's talk about safety, interactions, and I think what we're getting into with that is the beers criteria. What are the beers criteria, and how does that, Im how does that impact all of this? Right. Well, I want to come back to, because this can bring, uh, come to the beers criteria after uh, sure. commenting on Gary's remark. I think formularies are in part driven by lots of different factors. It's evidence um, and access. And what I find with prior authorizations, which leads into the safety. So they sometimes use it as a way to look at chronic use over time, right, to some extent. So let's bring up the beers criteria. The American Geriatric Society, um, since 2012, 2012, have put up to the beers criteria almost every three years. Uh, we didn't there was point. one in 2019. Yes, this year. Yes, this right. year. So this there's year. 2012, 2015. We were gunning for 2018, but we didn't quite make it. So we made it in January of 2019. So um, and that uh, medication uh, list, or I like to call it a tool, is really to help um, providers, to help insurers, to help researchers really identify potentially inappropriate medications. It's also used to look at some of the risk benefit um, with diseases and potential other medications. Uh, it's expanded this year in 2019 to also include some additional drug-drug interactions um, and they've continued, we've continued the um, extension on some renal dosing, which are special considerations for older adults. With relevance to this conversation, focusing on sleep disorders right. and insomnia in our older adult, um, there's classes of medications that we've talked about that are on the potentially inappropriate medication list because of um, the implication on falls or the implications on cognition or maybe worsening delirium such as benzodiazepines. Um, there are anticholinergic agents and they exclude the lower doses of doxepin because it doesn't have the same anticholinergic properties. So this list is used by insurers to really look at some of the safety implications um, for these medications, which brought up in more of the more recent updates the prolonged use of the non-benzodiazepines, um, such as the Z drugs, because we saw some of the same safety signal that we saw with the benzodiazepines. So every three years, there's an in-depth review of the literature um, to really look at older adults. And we've been, if you look at the evidence tables that most people don't pay attention to within the beers criteria that complement the table shells, um, we really are trying to focus on looking at even the age within the populations. So um, some of the studies we're really seeing, trying to look at those are 75 and older. Because I think as we all get closer to 65, we're like, that's not really that old. And then, <laughs> so the just- The older I get, get the younger, younger they look. <laughs> exactly. So however you want to define that, but in all seriousness. So it's a, it's a tool. Um, what concerns me as I'm sitting next to Gary here is sometimes payers use this kind of as a punitive tool, what I will pay for, what I won't pay for, um, and, and may sometimes put a lot of uh, blocks, uh, roadblocks or barriers wait, to prescribing. Wait, again, you know, yeah. poor Gary. I, I'm I, sorry, I, Gary. No, that's but, all. Probably yeah. defend himself. <laughs> but if but yeah. I were in Gary's place, mm -hmm. and I looked at the beer's criteria, and I saw drug A had a higher risk profile in the elderly than drug B, I might not put that on the formulary, Gary. Well, that's absolutely true. Let, let me just say something about what, what I commented on earlier. I was, I was very uh, uh, flip in a way of saying that uh, uh, it really depends on what the consumer wishes to purchase. Now that is true, but the Beers criteria and high-risk medications and the elderly is a very real concern for insurers, for health plans, for a couple of reasons. One from a purely, uh, well, three reasons. One from a purely altruistic uh, standpoint, we you know, want to see our subscribers do well and live happy. But the other one is purely economic. Uh, some of the automobile accidents, the falls, the uh, comorbidities uh, that end up costing money um, are important. And then the third thing is, uh, again, I deal primarily with Medicare. CMS has, uh, uh, is very concerned about uh, high-risk medications and um, uh, rewards, if you will, health plans for uh, making active steps to limit those, so those drugs in the elderly. So all this into your recommendations for your uh, Medicare Advantage Part D formularies. Is that right? Yes. 